welcome to the new module of uh, this relief. In this particular module, we will discuss the various types of uh, reliefs. Uh, Let us have a look uh, that what we had studied previously. Uh, we have gone through the relief concepts, what is the relief, etc. Uh, we discussed about the various sources of uh, overpressure. We had a discussion about uh, the defense mechanism. We analyze the pressure temperature curve for various uh, runaway reactions. We have discussed about the guidelines for the relief pressure along with the methodology of for the safe installation of various relief devices. We had a brief discussion about uh, the installation and a location of various reliefs. Now, in this particular chapter, in this particular module, we will discuss uh, the relief types and we have will uh, understand that various type of relief devices and various mechanisms. Now, a pressure relief uh, uh, valve is uh, safely designed to protect the pressurized uh, equipment or system during an overpressure event or in the event of vacuum. Uh, now, an overpressure event uh, uh, is a condition in which uh, the pressure uh, inside the system increased beyond the specified design uh, pressure or MAWP maximum allowable working pressure. Now, if uh, not relieved this can damage the system property and personnel. So, similarly an unwanted vacuum or under pressure is also dangerous for the system. Now, the type of relief devices uh, uh, chosen depends upon the material to be handled. This is very core issue. Uh, the material can be liquid, gas, mixture of liquid and gases, solids and corrosive materials. So, you have to choose the appropriate relief device based on this particular material. The material may be vented to the atmosphere and if it is not costly and does not possess any threat to the atmosphere, it may be vented to containment system, scrubber, flare, condenser, incinerator, etc. for further handling. So, this is again a very crucial issue. Now, in engineering terms, the type of relief device is, is specified on the basis of the details of the relief system, what are the process conditions involved in that particular process, what are the physical properties of the relieved fluid. So, these, these are the things which we need to be addressed while designing the proper relief device. Now, uh, based on uh, this particular aspect, different type of uh, relief devices or a relief valves are designed. The reclosing type of pressure relief valve is one of them. Now, the relief valve is primarily uh, for the liquid service. The relief valve is a gradual lift pressure relief device uh, actuated by uh, inlet static pressure. Now, the relief uh, valve liquid only that is uh, specified now we are we are discussing the liquid only. The relief valve begins to operate at uh, set pressure the definition of set pressure we have already discussed in previous module. The opening pressure can be adjusted by changing the load on the spring. Uh, this valve reaches uh, uh, the full capacity within the pressure reaches 25 percent over pressure if it is uh, set at 25 per per percent. The valve closes at the pressure returns to the set pressure. Now, if we discuss about the safety valve for the gas service, a safety valve is a rapid opening or pop up action pressure relief valve actuated by inlet static pressure. A discharge nozzle is sometimes used to direct the high velocity fluid towards the valve seat. Now, after the blow down of the excess pressure, the valve recedes to the original position below the uh, set pressure. So, safety valves are classified uh, according to the lift of disc and the bore of the valve. So, based on this particular aspect, uh, there are various type of safety valve. One is that low lift safety valve. Now, in this particular low lift safety valve, disc lifts automatically such that the actual discharge area is determined by the position of the disc. Second is the full lift safety valve. The disc lift automatically such that the actual discharge area is not determined by the position of the disc. Another one is the full bore safety valve. 
uh, no prostitutions in the bore that can restrict or work as a controlling orifice or to reduce the flow from the valve. The safety relief valve is used for liquid and gas service. The safety relief valve function as a relief valve open in proportion to the overpressure for liquid and as safety valve that is open by pop up action for the gas source system. And, uh, the safety, revolve, uh, safety relief valves they are classified as the conventional one, the pilot operated, the balanced bellow, the power actuated, the temperature actuated. So, based on these two aspects like that liquid and a gas service, you can um, classify as for the following five different types. Now, here uh, you can have a look of about uh, the classification uh, stream, these are the relief devices, they are further divided into the spring operated one and the rupture disc one. Now, spring operated one again they are further classified in two aspects, the conventional and the balanced bellow. So, let us have a look of uh, uh, one by one, the conventional spring operated valves. So, if you look the typical component of a spring operated valve, now this is the best example is uh, the spring operated valve, sometimes they are used in the boilers. Now, the spring, this controls the position of the disc, now this is the spring, the inlet nozzle connected to the, uh, no, uh, connected to the nozzle to be protected, this one, the outlet one the pressure adjustment is screw that is the set pressure adjusting is screw which from which you can change the pressure or tension on the spring. The movable disc, this is the movable or seat disc here, this controls the flow through the no nozzle. Now, while considering the operation, the inlet pressure exerts a lifting pressure on the spindle, this one, the, the lifting force is reacted against the downward force uh, of the spring, because of based on the spring constant, the spring exerts this downward force. Now, if the inlet pressure is increased to the point where the total upward pressure overcomes the spring force like this, then the wall opens and uh, uh, when the wall opens, then the pressure or the fluid may come out from this zone to this one. So, I conclude that the set pressure is the proportional to the pressure drop across the seat. So, these walls are appropriate when no back pressure exists on the discharge side or when the back pressure does not alter the set pressure and the performance of the valve known as uh, beyond limit. Now, with the increase in the back pressure downstream of the valve, the set pressure will also increase, hence the valve may not open at uh, a correct pressure. Now, additionally, the uh, uh, while discussing the conventional spring operated valve, additionally the discharge is proportional to the pressure difference across the seat. So, hence the increase in the brake pressure hinders the flow through the valve. Now, practically they can be used without any problem in case of atmospheric discharge. Now, there are two type of conventional spring operated valve, open spring bonnet also be used for the liquid or a places where the fluid must not be spread outside. The closed spring bonnet, the influence of back pressure is negligible. Now, leakage between the valve seat and disc is called the simmer, which typically occurs about at about 95 percent of the set pressure. Now, simmer free operation can also be possible with the proper valve maintenance, selection of a better seating type and in better conditions. Now, for example, the remember when food is being prepared in pressure cooker at your home, you can easily observe the simmer before the pressure relief device pops up. So, you, you may experience that there is leakage of steam around the, the gasket or around the, the vessel. Now, there are uh, uh, certain things related to the advantages of these conventional spring operated valve. So, it is most reliable type of relief device if properly sized and operated. 
Now, these type of devices are also suitable due to its versatility of use. It can be used in both vapor, vapor gas only as well as multiphase systems. When we are having the advantage, there are certain disadvantages also associated with these conventional spring operated valves. The relieving pressure is affected by back pressure and susceptible to chatter that is the rapid opening or and closing of valve. Now, if uh, built up pressure is too high, now sometimes misalignment of valve seat failure in worst case mechanical failure of valve may result due to chattering. So, this is the disadvantage associated with the conventional spring operated valve. Now, uh, there are uh, uh, various reasons because we have discussed about the chattering. So, there are possible reasons for the occurrence of uh, chattering. So, we uh, you can have a look of those reasons. The spring relief device requires at least 20, 25 to 30 percent of maximum flow capacity to maintain the valve seat in open position. Oversized valve or improper valve handling may also lead towards the chattering sometimes excessive inlet pressure drop and excessive built up of back pressure in relief system may also result chattering. Now, second is uh, the balanced bellow or BB valves. Uh, now, this is uh, you can have a, f a picture of this uh, balanced bellow valves bit similar to the spring operated or spring actuated uh, Wall. So, when variable or unpredictable back pressure exists inside the system, valve disc balancing become necessary. So, in conventional spring operated valve, if the spring bonnet is, this one is the bonnet. Now, if the spring bonnet is vented to discharge, the back pressure add with the spring pressure through the whole surface of the disc retainer. Now, balanced bellows are used when the total back pressure that is the superimposed plus built up. So, the total back pressure does not exceed the 50 percent of the set pressure. Now, the conditions where the superimposed back pressure is variable, these balanced bellow valves are suggested to be installed. So, the balanced valves are designed in such a way to exclude the unbalanced area from the effect of back pressure. Now, the bellows, the, the, these are the bellows, you can see, these are the bellows. Bellows situated on the back side of the valve seat function in such a way to maintain the atmospheric pressure on the side of the seat. So, hence the balanced bellow valve will always open at the desired set pressure. This is the plus point of this balanced bellow valve. However, the flow through balanced bellow valve is also proportional to the pressure difference between the inlet and outlet of the valve. So, this result in the reduced flow of uh, with increase in back pressure. The area of uh, bellows nearly equals the nozzle seat area, this one. The bonnet is vented to ensure that uh, the bellows are at the atmospheric pressure and it also provides an indicative sign that the bellows or piston begin to leak. The bellows length is sized to allow the valve lift without being compressed too much. The bellows also restricts the contact of uh, process fluid from spring of the valve. Now, this is advantageous in case of handling the corrosive uh, fluid which can be which can deteriorate the spring proge progressively. So, there are several advantages and disadvantages associated with this uh, balanced bellow valve. Uh, the advantage let us have a look of advantages that relief pressure is not affected by the back pressure. Now, it can handle high built up uh, uh, back pressure and also can handle the corrosive fluids. Now, there are several disadvantages. Now, this bellow is susceptible to fatigue or rupture, it may cause a problem. It may release the flammable or toxic fluid to atmosphere if not uh, if ruptured automatically. Now, it requires a separate venting system. So, these are the several disadvantages, uh, although these advantages may be corrected if uh, it is uh, being used in due course of time. Now, another relief device is 
is called the rupture disc or bursting disc. Now, these are the specially designed to rupture at a specified relief set pressure and most common is your domestic pressure cooker safety valve. Now, it is usually consist of calibrated sheet of metal usually less than uh, 0 0.05 mm in thickness. Now, this is designed to rupture at a well specified pressure. Now, here you can see that this one. Now, here if pressure rises and if it crosses the, the set pressure, then it ruptures and it went it to the atmosphere. Now, usually this disc has its dome uh, with the direction of uh, bursting pressure. This one you can see. They are, they are used alone in series or in parallel to spring loaded safety valve. It may. Now, the ring holding the disc on the vent uh, uh, side is made thicker than the dome in order to protect it later. Now, here uh, there is a ring. Now, this can be made from a variety of the material including exotic corrosion resistant material etcetera. Now, some other type of disc used for the general application include composite slotted disc, reverse bulking disc. Now, uh, let us have a brief discussion about the composite slotted disc. This consists of a main disc where uh, which is uh, slotted to burst. Now, slotting allows uh, the disc to made from thicker material which made it uh, less liable to fatigue. A protective membrane made of plastic uh, or polymer or metal is also supported over it to give the protection against corrosion. Now, we have a reverse bulking disc. Now, a reverse bulking disc has its dome in opposite direction of the bursting pressure. At burst pressure, the dome of the disc reverses and it cut by a knife on the downstream side. Now, this disc are 3, 4 times thicker than the conventional one which we have discussed earlier. Now, uh, an important problem uh, with the rupture disc is uh, the flexing of uh, metal as process pressure changes. So, if uh, the process pressure fluctuating, then there may be a problem of flexing of the metal. So, flexing could lead to the premature failure at the pressures below the set pressure. So, this is uh, you may term as uh, the disadvantage. For this reason, some rupture disc systems are designed to operate at pressure well below the set pressure. So, this is the crucial aspect. In addition, vacuum services uh, or may cause the rupture disc failure if the relief system is not specifically designed for the service. Now, another problem with the rupture disc system is uh, that once they open, they remain open. You need to replace those discs. So, this may lead to the complete discharge of the process material. So, this particular aspect need to be addressed while you are using the uh, or you are adopting this uh, rupture disc. So, sometimes because uh, the all material or everything is exposed to the atmosphere or a, um, the volume in question. So, it may also allow to enter the process uh, air or it may allow the air to enter the process leading to the possible fire and explosion. So, this is again a very important thing. Now, to sometimes to prevent this problem, rupture discs are available with embedded wires that are cut when the disc ruptures and this can activate uh, an alarm in the control room to alert the operator so that uh, uh, they may be aware about the emergency that or they may be aware that uh, rupture disc burst. Also, when rupture disc rupture, uh, uh, rupture, the pieces of uh, the disc may become dislodged, creating potential downstream plugging problem. And sometimes, if uh, the metal is reactive, it may lead to the runaway reaction, or it may catalyze the reaction which is uh, under the process. So, recent advances in the rupture disc design have minimized this particular problem. Now, these rupture discs are available in much larger size than the spring operated relief valve with commercial sizes available up to several feet in diameter. 
These rupture discs typically cost less than the equivalently sized spring operated relief fall and moreover the maintenance and other things are on the lower side for these rupture discs compared to the spring operated relief fall where you need to perform the regular maintenance. Now, there are certain combined assemblies, <coughs> the, these uh, rupture discs are frequently installed in series in the spring loaded relief. Now, to protect an, an uh, expensive spring loaded device from a corrosive environment because these spring loaded uh, devices are very much expensive. Now, to give the complete isolation when handling extremely toxic chemicals. And sometimes because the spring loaded relief may weep at the, uh, at the time when you are using those toxic chemicals. Now, to give the absolute isolation when handling the flammable gases, again uh, this is uh, very important. Sometimes they use to protect the combined assemblies to protect the relatively complex part of a spring loaded device uh, from a reactive monomer that could cause plugging. And sometimes uh, combined assembly is used to relieve the slurries uh, that may plug the spring loaded devices. So, they are having a variety of uses. So, when rupture disc, uh, are discs are used before a spring loaded uh, relief device, a pressure gauge is usually installed between these two devices. The telltale gauge is an indicator uh, that shows when the disc ruptures. So, they are having again stand by uh, a proper arrangement for uh, indicating that when this particular disc ruptures. Now, let us have a discussion about uh, the vacuum relief fall. These are the simple vent can also provide protection against vacuum for home applications. So, our home water storage tank sometimes or sewage tanks they are fitted with the kind of simple vent. Now, industrial tanks uh, uh, which store various uh, precious or uh, toxic chemicals and hydrocarbons cannot use such vents. Now, if used the compo compound released may be odorous, toxic or potential hazardous. Now, to avoid such kind of a release special vacuum uh, walls are used. Now, the pressure vacuum uh, 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 relief wall they are designed to maintain a tight seals until system pressure or vacuum exceeds the set pressure of the wall. So, when the over pressure occurs, the pressure lifts the disc just like a safety wall allowing the vapors to pass and the when vacuum occurs, the vacuum lifts the disc and let the air inside to break the vacuum. Now, this is termed as the breathing of tank. Now, let us have a discussion about the pilot operated pressure relief valve. So, when back pressure is more than 40 percent of the set pressure, the pilot operated uh, relief valve is used. This is a very common practice. Now, these valve consist a pilot valve or a control pilot, a main valve or a diaphragm operated uh, disc, a pilot tube, the dome, a disc or a piston and a seat the volume above the piston is called the dome. Now, this type of valve is a self contained system and they do not require any external power or a pressure source. Now, it operates using the system pressure and a control the actuator pressure uh, to either open or close the main valve. Now, this is uh, the typical uh, uh, figure of uh, pilot operated pressure relief wall in open and closed system. Now, this is the open condition. So, when fluid passes through this way and this one is the closed one. So, you can see all the things which we have discussed in uh, the previous slide, they, they, they are here. So, under normal operating conditions, the pilot allows the same pressure which is acting downward against the actuator or upward against the seat pallet into the piston chamber. Now, since uh, the actuator has a large area than the seat pallet, the net force is downward which will press the pallet against the seat and thus keep the main valve closed. So, while the pilot and the main valve are closed, there is no bleeding of fluid to the atmosphere. 
So, when um, the internal pressure of the system rises the pilot set point, the upward force in the pilot sense the chamber will overcome and the downward spring force to lift the pilot stem. So, as the stem lifts it opens the pilot seat to allow the flow through the pilot and out uh, to the atmosphere. So, if uh, fluid is uh, flammable or toxic then pilot uh, discharge get mounted to the main valve outlet for channeling the collection unit so that it cannot go into the atmosphere for the creation of further problem. Now, as the fluid passes through the pilot, it decreases the pressure downstream to the orifice since uh, decreases the actuator pressure. Now, this uh, reduces the downward pressure on the seat pallet which keeps the main valve closed. So, hence after certain pilot at certain point the main valve start opening. So, the amount of opening of main valve directly depends on the system over pressure and it opens completely at the approx uh, or you can say the approximately 10 percent of uh, over pressure. So, there are several advantages associated with this pilot operated pressure relief valve. The uh, 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 the system operating pressure can be adjusted up to 5 percent of the set pressure without danger of uh, increased seat leakage to in the main valve. They reduce the cost for the larger valve size. Valves can be uh, set to open fully at set pressure and close uh, with a very short blow down. The pilot operated valves they are used uh, in clean low pressure services. So, while we have uh, several advantages, uh, uh, there are several disadvantages for these uh, pilot operated pressure relief valves. They are not useful for dirty or a fouling services due to the plugging of the uh, pilot valve. The limited number of valve sizes are available and can be used up to 800 Kelvin temperature even by using the modified versions. The vapor condensation can result to liquid accumulation above the piston and that may cause the valve to malfunction. So, these are the several disadvantages of these valves. Now, there are several temperature activated relief valves. So, these valves can be set open or close as per the temperature data which is readily available. The opening and closing is achieved by using actuator and uh, a control system. So, these type of valve always control the process variables that is temperature that directly affects the rate of a reaction. The action can be taken in early stage as compared to the pressure activated relief valve. So, the lower release of flu uh, fluid um, is due to early detection. Now, these valves are very useful for handling two phase fluids as they are, uh, these are these fluids are directly depends upon the temperature. So, use of highly engineered devices such as sensors, processors and valves are required and care must be taken while using the, uh, such designs. Online functioning of data is also possible through such devices. The thermal relief valves are provided on cooling services where the system can be locked in by isolating valves. So, in this particular module we have discussed various classification of those relief devices, uh, the advantages and disadvantages associated uh, with uh, these devices and for further study you can have a look of these references which we have already listed in this uh, particular module. Thank you very much.